Hey there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the atom. We're going to see what an atom is and what it's made up of and why they're so important. The first thing that we need to ask ourselves is what are atoms? Well, in very, very simple terms, atoms are just types of particles. And we've already covered what particles are. And it's important to note that atoms are the smallest type of particle that cannot be broken down by chemical means. Now we can break atoms down into something slightly smaller, but not with a chemical reaction. At the center of an atom, we've got the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we've got two types of subatomic particles. These are called protons and neutrons. Now we're gonna learn a little bit about what protons and neutrons are in a minute. It's just worth pointing out that when we say subatomic, we mean smaller than an atom. So anything that is subatomic is smaller than an atom. So obviously protons and neutrons are both subatomic. There's a third type of subatomic particle in an atom too, and these are called electrons. And electrons orbit the nucleus of the atom. And the easiest way to think about this is that they're just going around in circles. It's a bit more complicated than that. But they're going around in circles in the same way that a planet would orbit the sun. So, what are atoms made of? Well, we've already mentioned the three types of subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And each of these types of subatomic particles is different to the other. So, they have mass. Now, normally when we measure mass, we'd measure mass in grams. However, because atoms are so tiny, and it's really, really hard to convey just how small they are, because they're so small, we're not going to measure mass in grams. We're going to use a unit called atomic mass units. And a proton has a mass of one atomic mass unit, or one AMU. A neutron has a mass of one AMU. And an electron is so small that we say its mass is negligible. Essentially, it has no mass. Now, this isn't strictly true, and it's about one eighteen hundredth of a proton or a neutron, but we say it's nothing. Each of these subatomic particles also has a charge, so an electric charge. A proton has a charge of plus one. It has a positive charge. And that's kind of given away in the name proton, pro-positive. So proton plus one. A neutron has no charge. It is neutral. Again, the name kind of gives that away. Neutron, neutral, they make sense. An electron has a charge of minus one, so it is negative really really important that you remember these masses and these charges for these three different types of subatomic particle so all atoms are made of protons neutrons and electrons protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus the number of protons in the nucleus is always equal to the atomic number so if i ask you to look at a copy of the periodic table right now and i said find the element lithium you should see that it has three protons in it it has an atomic number of three. The charge on an atom is always zero. Now what this means is that the number of electrons is always the same as the number of protons. So their charges cancel each other out. So an atom always has a charge of zero. And the mass number is always equal to the number of protons and the number of neutrons found within the nucleus. We're going to have a look at how we can interpret these symbols, how we can work out the number of protons and number of neutrons and the overall charge. So here we have the element boron and we can see that it has the number five at the top and you should recall that is the atomic number or the proton number. It has a symbol capital B, it has its name boron and it has another number at the bottom 11 and again you should recall that this is the mass number. So Boron has an atomic number of five, so it will contain five protons. Remember, the atomic number is always equal to the number of protons. The number of electrons, as we've already said, is always the same as the number of protons. So, if there are five protons in boron, then there must be five electrons. Now, neutrons are a little bit harder to work out, but not particularly hard. So, the mass number, or the nucleon number, is the number of protons and the neutrons. So, we can work out the number of neutrons in an atom by taking our mass number and minusing the atomic number. So, here, 
we can see the mass number is 11 and the atomic number is 5. So the number of neutrons must be 11 minus 5. And of course, 11 minus 5 is 6. So the number of neutrons in boron is 6. So we can calculate the number of neutrons by looking at the number of protons and the mass number. The mass of a proton and a neutron is 1 AMU, and we've already mentioned this. So the mass of 5 protons must be 5 AMU. The mass of 6 neutrons must be 6 AMU. And of course, we've mentioned that electrons have no mass, so it doesn't matter how many electrons we have, the mass is always going to be zero. The overall mass in AMU is going to be equal to the mass of all the subatomic particles combined. So we add the mass of the protons, the neutrons, and of course the electrons, which will always be zero together. And in this case, we get 11. 5 plus 6 equals 11. So what you should notice is that the number of protons and neutrons combined is equal to the mass number. If you find it's different, then you have made a mistake somewhere. Now, the third thing we need to look at are the overall charges. So we know that a single proton has a charge of plus one. In this example, we have five protons. So if each of those protons has a charge of plus one, the charge on five protons must be plus five. We know that neutrons have no charge, so it doesn't matter how many neutrons we have in our atom, the charge on the neutron will always be zero. And we know that a single electron has a charge of minus one. If there are five electrons in this atom, then there are five charges of minus one. Five times minus one is obviously going to be minus five. So we should notice that the charge of the protons and the electrons is equal but opposite. So the protons are plus five, the electrons are minus five. And when we add these together, the charges should cancel each other out to give us our overall charge, which for an atom should always be zero. An atom is always neutral. There are sometimes cases where an atom can become charged and have a positive or negative charge. When this happens, it's no longer called an atom, it becomes something called an ion. We're gonna look at that in a later lesson, so don't worry about it too much. Just remember that all atoms are neutral. So. Just from this symbol, we've worked out the number of protons, neutrons, electrons, the mass, and the overall charge. So there is a lot of information that can be taken just from looking at the symbols in the periodic table. We're going to look now at what the structure of an atom is like, where the protons and neutrons are, we know they're already in the nucleus, and what the electrons do, we know they're orbiting, but we need to make sure we understand it. And we're going to look at the example of oxygen. So oxygen has an atomic number of eight. So it must contain eight protons in its nucleus. So it has a charge of plus eight if we just have the protons included. Now we know that if there are eight protons, there must be eight electrons. And these eight electrons orbit the outside of our nucleus. Now it's really worth noticing that the electrons are in what we call two different electron shells. So there are two different orbits. The first electron shell contains a maximum of two electrons. Every other electron shell contains a maximum of eight. Once again, this is something we're going to look at in much more detail in another lesson. It's worth noting that there are eight protons and eight electrons, so the charges have cancelled each other out. And the final thing we need to put in are our neutrons. These, of course, are also going to be in the nucleus. So we need to work out how many neutrons there are. Remember, number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. So 16 minus eight gives us eight. So there are eight neutrons in the nucleus. Of course, if we have eight more neutrons, then the mass is going to be 16. Eight protons and eight neutrons will give us a mass of 16. So this is how our atom of oxygen is going to look. It's worth pointing out that in this picture, even though the electrons are static, they are stationary, they're not moving, in a real atom, they will be orbiting the nucleus. This is just a model to explain how things work to ensure that you can understand it. In summary, atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. 
Electrons orbit the nucleus in shells. Protons and neutrons have a mass of one. Electrons have no mass. Protons have a charge of plus one. Electrons minus one. And neutrons have no charge. The overall charge on an atom is zero because the number of protons and electrons is equal. So the charges cancel each other out. And the number of protons and electrons is equal to the atomic number. And the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. So I hope you know a little bit more about atoms. I hope you can work out the number of protons, neutrons, electrons. I hope you can work out the charges involved. Until next lesson, keep on learning.